Jesus. Good morning, everyone. I have the wonderful responsibility of introducing Pastor Brown today to our church and his wonderful wife, Rosemary. Um, I've been a part of New Hope since the beginning, and we've been very blessed over the years to have him come speak to us. So he is president and CEO of Kalamazoo Gospel Ministries. Hopefully I got that right. I've been saying it over and over all morning, <laughs> so I wouldn't mess up. So without further ado, Pastor Brown. Good morning. I have, uh, wow, been coming to New Life for I don't know how many, uh, New Hope for I don't know how many years. You all were in Lawton, I think, when I first started coming out. And uh, I really appreciate Pastor Mark and uh, his lovely wife, Jean, for this opportunity to invite me out. Um, I hope that you all know that they are a blessing. Uh, when you look at your pastors, you know that uh, God really loves you because he's taking care of you through, through those uh, appointing those pastors here. Um, most of y'all know my wife, Rosemary. Y'all wave at him, Rosemary. <laughs> uh, we have our, um, some guests with us today. We have uh, uh, two of our very oldest and dearest friends. I meant oldest in the term of we've known them the longest, y'all. <laughs> Let me be clear. Uh, the Caudles, Ed and Dee Caudle, and we also have uh, Rosemary's sister Mary and her husband Dale uh, with us this morning. So it's good. <laughs> it's good to see uh, you all here. Thank you all for joining us this morning. Um, I, I want to talk to you first about, um, I just want to inform you all that Kalamazoo Gospel Ministries has an event coming up, and it is called Hope Takes Flight. This is our yearly fundraiser. This is the largest fundraiser that we do. It's going to be October 10th at the Air Zoo. And so if you go up on our website, you can get all the information that you need. It's going to be a great meal catered by Radisson. Uh, you're going to hear some testimonies of some of the people that we work with and some of our staff. Um, so it'll be a great, great evening. There'll be games and there's some other things that are going on that night. Uh, we're excited about it. Uh, I, I gotta tell you, uh, giving for not only Kalamazoo Gospel Ministries, but a lot of the other ministries that I've talked to, we see giving down now. Um, I personally don't look for the government to fill my cup. I mean, that's just me. I don't hope I ain't stepping on nobody's toes, but I don't look for the government to fill my cup. You know, I look for the people of God to hear the voice of God and then to fund the purposes of God. And so, and I believe that God blesses us so that we can stand in that space and that we can do that. All right, so uh, we need your help at Kalamazoo Gospel Ministries. Um, there, I tell you what, the need is as great as it's ever been. Um, and one of the things that is, um, is challenging is that the need is great at home. Uh, we see people out on the corners and we see people out that, are, that are not doing anything and oftentimes people look at that and they think about the gospel mission and they say, well, I'm not funding that. Well, those are not the people we're working with. <laughs> the people that we are working with may have been on the corners, they may have been panhandling, but those are the ones that are coming to us saying, I need help. Some of them say, I need help, I need a night stay. Some of them say, I need help, I need my life changed. And so they commit to our long-term programs and we worked with them for a year and our hope is that in the future we'll be able to have some transitional housing so that they can move into while we still have the uh, opportunity to work with them and teach them how to pay bills and teach them how to prioritize and so that they can get traction in their life and their lives can be turned around. 
Uh, that's the difference between what we like to do or what we feel that we should be doing and what oftentimes government programs do. Government programs say if we stick you in a box, you ain't homeless no more. And they will stick you in a box anywhere to get you out of downtown. But I, that's not what I'm here to talk about this morning. So I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm, I'm gonna leave that right. I'm gonna leave that right there. Um, but you gotta know there's a lot going on in the world. I mean, there are things that we're confronted with now that that five, ten, fifteen years ago we never would have thought we'd be having these conversations. I think sometimes, you know, I mean, I miss my mom and dad, but I wouldn't wish them back. If my mom and dad came back, they'd be so confused with the way that the world is right now. I mean, one thing that would throw them off if they walked in my front door and said, Alexa, turn the lights on. <laughs> they'd be like, who's that woman? You know, where's she at? You know, what you got another woman in your house? You know, they, they would be so confused, you know. I mean, just for my dad to, to, to go out to get in my car and, and the motor's running before we leave the house because I pressed a button. You know, I mean, just, it, it just things. But then the conversations that people have nowadays. And the thing for me that's challenging is when those conversations are being had and the people of God are silent. They're not saying anything. I mean, oftentimes, they don't know what to say. They don't want to be the odd man out, if you will. They don't want to be the one that looks different than everybody. They don't want to be put on the spot. I, I'm not a theologian. I mean, I. I I've met people that you quote, you give them a, a, a scriptural address and they can quote the Bible tell you, tell them, stop. I'm not that guy. But I know stuff that's right and I know when stuff ain't right. And I was raised to oppose what's not right. I was raised to speak up. I want to talk to you for a few minutes about um, um, Peter and John. If you remember in Acts 4, um, there's a, a, a very famous story. We all know it. Uh, Peter and John are going into the temple, and um, they, there's a, a, um, a lame man is laying there. And he said, um, He's asking alms for the poor. You know, I often think about that man when I see people around the town and, and things. And, and I wish I could tell you what the silver bullet is that, that would cause us to be able to touch that man on the corner on Stadium Drive and Verdicts and, and uh, um, Drake Road or anywhere and tell him, rise up, take your bed and walk, and, and see him get up. I mean, I think I know what it is. I, I, I really think that for the, for, I, I really think that the, the thing that's missing is the fact that we don't want to be put on the spot and look like we're nuts. We don't, we don't want it to not happen and we'd be embarrassed. We don't want to do that. And, and I can only speak for myself because God is working with me, trying to work me through this, because I, I believe that God wants all of us to be effective at those times for him, and it's not our power, it's his. And so the thing that we have is we have the examples in scripture that have been set for us that we can look at those examples and say, you know what, that's what I need to do. So Peter and John look at the gentleman and they tell him, they said, I, I don't have any silver, I don't have any gold, but I tell you what I got. In the name of Jesus, rise up, take up your bed and walk. And scripture tells us not only did the guy stand up, but he got up, it says leaping. Huh? Huh? 
No, I mean, I know people that'll tell you there's no way that that could happen. I mean, because you got to have rehab. <laughs> Those of us that have knees, <laughs> knees and hips and stuff, we know about rehab, right? But we didn't get up just leaping and stuff. So, so in our carnal mind, that doesn't make sense. But I don't know. Maybe I'm old-fashioned. I just believe what Scripture says. You know, I mean, I, I mean, I was taught that if if Scripture said it. It was true. My mother used to say, God said it, I believe it, and that settled it. Well, you know, as I've gotten older, I've learned that it was settled before I believed it. But, I mean, you know, not, I'm, I'm not saying that about my mom, because my mom is the one that she set the foundation, she and my dad, for who I am and what I believe today. So I want to pick up this story, though, in um, Acts 4.23. Because Peter and John, after doing this, they were ridiculed by the, the leaders. Some of the leaders even in the church ridiculed them and, and said, you know, okay, you, you know, this name that you're using, this name, this name of Jesus, yeah, we, you know, you shouldn't be doing that. We don't want you doing that. We don't want you speaking in that name. And... Um, Peter and John, the thing I love is that Peter and John did not get intimidated by the authority of the people that were telling them to be silent. So when they were let go, this is where our uh, scripture begins in verse 23. It says, and being let go, they went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. So when they heard that, they raised their voices to God with one accord and said, Lord, you are God who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, who by the mouth of your servant David have said, why do the nations rage and the people plot vain things? I want to pause right here to give you a little bit of encouragement that oftentimes we see things happening in the world and, and our first response is, oh my God, you know, what are they doing now? Oh my God, how is that gonna affect me? Oh my God, we, 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 we'll respond like that. They didn't do like that because what, what scripture says is the people were plotting vain things. Do you know that the plots and the plans of the enemy are vain? Remember that. Remember that. All of that stuff is going to come to nothing. Verse 26, the kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate, and the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. I don't have enough time to spend on that, but, but, I, but, but when y'all get home, read that, because, because that scripture used to confuse me. Because it says, Jesus was anointed, Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together to do whatever God's hand purposed before to be done. Now we're talking about when they crucified Jesus. So, so it, how do I say this? So everything that looks like all is lost against you Sometimes it's God moving you to a place. You got to go through it to get what God has for you on the other side. Jesus had to be crucified, okay? But, but if we were standing there watching this, we'd like, what's going on? What, what's happening? Now, all of that is in that scripture. You get a chance, take a look at it. I don't have time to do it this morning. Boy, but I tell you. <laughs> mm. Now, Lord, 
Look on their threats and grant that your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Now the multitudes of those people who believed were of one heart, one soul, neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common, and with great power the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. God is looking for a people who are totally dependent on him and confident that he's going to do what he said he will do. Regardless of what it looks like, God's word is true, and he's looking for people that will demonstrate confidence in his words. In Acts 4, we see a powerful example of a confident church. The church was great in the things of God because God was with them. I want to give you a couple of points. The first one being that we should be given to much prayer. Now, I know we pray. All of us pray. I mean, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand if you pray. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about some of the prayers that we pray because I've had to check myself sometimes because when I, when I get in the habit of prayer, sometimes the habit is in the praying. It's, it, the habit is getting up and praying. You pray for your food. You pray when you wake up in the morning. Pray for you to go to bed. That's not the kind of prayer. I'm talking about a heartfelt petition to God with an expectation that he's going to respond because what I'm praying is his word. Is that all right? That's the kind of prayer I'm talking about. And so prayer not, it needs not to be something that we do it because it's time for us to do it according to a clock. It's not chronologically time for us to do it, but it's time for us to do it because of where we are and where the world is and where we see it going. It is time for us to come together to be a people of prayer. Now, 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 you might say, yeah, but you know, my church isn't open. Well, you know, you don't, your church don't need to be open to be a person of prayer. I mean, so, I mean I'm mean, i not going to get in everybody's business, but some of us haven't started coming back to church regularly since COVID anyway. We're still riding on the coattails of that excuse. You know, when the Bible tells us that we need to come together, okay, I mean, and you come together, not just for you, you come together for other people. Now, maybe I'll come back and talk about that uh, uh, at some point. But what I am talking about is the church, the people of God, the ecclesia, coming together and petitioning God for the things that are going on in our world. Sometimes we spend more time talking to other people than we spend talking to God. We spend more time listening to the news than we spend listening to what God would say about certain things. That's where uh, discouragement and depression and all of those things come from. And we don't need, to, we don't need any of that. We need to know that, that that's what's happening so that we don't get caught up in that. But we should be given to much prayer. The scripture says, and when they had prayed, Y'all bear with me, I'm trying to, trying to be technolog technologically astute with my iPad. <laughs> so their petition 
the help of Almighty God. Verse 24 says, uh, so when they heard that, they raised their voices to God with one accord. They prayed with expectation. Number two, we should desire and expect to be shaken by the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we pray for God, but we, but we really expect him to do stuff that makes sense to us. I don't want God doing stuff that makes sense to me. First of all, I don't know what's going on in the spirit. I mean, you know, God knows more than I do. I want his wisdom. I don't want him limited by my wisdom. I don't want him limited by my education. I want him limited by nothing. I want to pray with an expectation that God is going to show up in a way that is going to absolutely blow my mind. Amen. I've seen it before. I, I've seen God do things for us at the gospel mission. I've seen God do things in my own life. And it is those experiences that has put me in a place where I can trust him because I know that even when I lose hope and even when I'm not faithful to him, he's faithful to me. And he's faithful to his own, to his own word. And, and I believe that some of you all, if you think back, there were times in your life when you thought all hope was lost. It might have been a medical situation when the doctor said, told everybody to give up hope and you're still standing. It might have been a situation where it was financial and you just did financial and you just didn't know how you was going to make it and here you are. You're still getting up in the morning. Life is still good and God is still present in your situation. So those different experiences are the things that give us confidence in God because we know that he's been faithful, he will continue to be faithful. Your level, when you pray, your level of expectation is going to determine the experience that you have with God. If you don't expect nothing, huh? <laughs> if you don't expect nothing, you're going to get just what you expect. But if you pray with the confidence that you know that God is going to do what he said is he's going to do, you're going to see great and mighty things. And I think that's one of the things that some of us, if we were honest, would be guilty of. I, I have a friend of mine who told a story about um, he received a call that one of his relatives was in the hospital and they wanted him to come up and pray for him. And he said that he had known about the situation. He knew that the young man was in the hospital and he knew that the doctor said that there was no hope for him, but the family wanted him to come. And as he got in his car and was on his way up to the uh, hospital, he was in his mind thinking, okay, today is Wednesday. If he passes tonight, then they'll have the service sometime between now and next Wednesday. And, and I can take off from work so that I can be there to do this. And he's on his way up to pray for somebody. You know, if that's your attitude, don't come pray for me. <laughs> stay, stay home. Because you already wrote me off before you even got to the hospital, before you even started talking, you gave up. That's not the kind of prayer I want to pray. And that's not the kind of prayers that I want prayed for me. I want people that are willing to petition God for the impossible for me. I mean, I want people who can believe God when the doctor says that all hope is lost, that they can believe God that, yeah, he's going to be standing up here in a minute. He's going to be dancing here in a minute. Somebody asked me one time, they said, they said you know, when, 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 when you're finally laid there in front, and everybody is considering your life and, and they look out at you laying in the coffin, what would you want said about you? And the one thing I'd want to hear is, I think he moved. <laughs> 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 mm -hmm. 
verse 29. <laughs> verse 29, scripture says, now, Lord, look on their threats and grant that your servant that with all boldness they may speak your word. I, I've sat recently in some meetings uh, with people who, I don't get myself in trouble here, but I've sat in some meetings with people who uh, are supposed to be working with the homeless and, and supposed to be solving homeless problems and things like that, and, and they would support us if you just don't mention that Jesus thing. Just, just, just don't, just don't. Uh, I mean, I can see them coming, spending the night, but uh, do they have to pray? Do you make them pray? Do you make them pray? They shouldn't have to pray. You know, uh, do you make them pray before they eat? They, they shouldn't have to pray before they eat, I mean, because everybody don't believe in Jesus. My question is, how homeless are you? How hungry are you? How much do you want a night's sleep? I mean, I mean, if you, if you are hungry and, and all I'm requiring you to do is to pray over your bill, I hurry up and pray to get something to eat. I believe that we have a standard that we have to uphold. And if you look at some of the way that some things are being done now, the standard is being threatened. The foundation is being threatened. It is a truth that most of the educational institutions, institutions of higher learning in this country were started out as faith-based organizations. And you look at where they are now. There's a thing that we talk about in the mission world as it's called uh, mission drift. And what it is is when you start drifting away from your foundation. And I'm, I'm, I, I try to stay tuned to mission drift because I don't even want to start. I don't even want to start getting off. I don't want to even start giving up ground. And I thank God for my military career because there's something in me that recognizes when there's about to be a fight that says you need to go ahead and throw the first punch. It's gonna, it's gonna, if it's going to be a party, let's go on and get it started. You know, and so... Uh, and I believe that that is what God is calling us to now, to be aware and to not just stand for anything. I remember a, a friend of mine told me years ago that he was on the board of a local foundation when they started, um, when they started considering not funding faith-based organizations. And I asked him, I said, I said, brother, I said, if you was on the board, I said, how did they get that passed? He said, well, pastor, I was on the board. He said, but there were three pastors on that board, too. He said, and when the question was asked and the vote went up, he said, I didn't say anything, so I didn't say anything. And that's a part of how we got to where we are right now, for people not saying anything. I think of David. I mean, David just showed up to deliver lunch. And he hears somebody out here really ridiculing God, and he didn't say, oh, well, I know who God is, so, you know, he can say whatever he want to say. I, I know who God is. No, David said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? No, no, we ain't going out like that. David said, no, we ain't standing for that. A teenager. <laughs> and David turned around and, and went to fight Goliath with a sling. And I, I mean, you know, and I got to know, you, you got to know that when David looks down here at a giant, Goliath, I mean, there has to be some apprehension in his heart that said, God, I don't know how this is going to end, but I tell you what, I'm going to take this next, give me another, just one more stone and start running toward Goliath. And I think sometimes that's what we're missing. We are missing the want to take that next step, not knowing how it's going to turn out, knowing that God is going to see us through and see us to that end. We are missing the peace where we speak up in the face of adversity. Amen. 
we should walk together in unity. We, the church, we don't have to agree on everything. We, we don't have to agree on everything, but there's some keys that, that, that we need to be, agree on. Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Well, you see, there's churches that you can go in today and you could make that statement and somebody might have an argument with that. They say, well, wait a minute, I, I don't know, because, see, see, because I heard that, and they're willing to tell you something in churches. It's been allowed in. And so we need to be aware so that we can walk together in unity according to the scripture, according to the word of God. 32, verse 32 says, Now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. Now get this. It said, Neither did any, anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. One of the things that they did is they recognized that the blessings that they had were given to them by God for kingdom purpose. And that we need to come together for kingdom purpose and we need to give of our resources together to support what God wants done here. And I think sometimes we trust God for our future, but, but not enough. I won't, but I'm going to hold on to this over here just in case, just in case. You know, I'm just in case. I'm not going to give but so much because I know what God said to do. I know he'll do it, but, you know, I just, you know. And, and don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that we should not be prudent. But I also think that if we were, that if we would hear from God correctly, I believe that oftentimes God is telling us to do more than we are willing to hear him tell us do. I believe this number five, I believe that if we do these things, we too will demonstrate great power. And the great power the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Before we pray for that man, that woman, that homeless person, I believe that we need to have an expectation that when we pray, we're going to see a difference. We're going to see a change. We cannot, we can no longer continue to pray without expecting anything to change. What is the power of the Holy Spirit for if the, Holy, if the power of the Holy Spirit is not going to bring the word of God to fruition. And if you don't think it will, then, then I mean, just, just quit praying, just give up, just go home. But I don't believe that's what God brought us here for. And I don't care where you are, what ministry you are. I don't care if it's, if it's international ministry, if it's, if it's a local ministry. The power of God is at our disposal to make changes and to, and to save lives in the earth today, just like it was for John and Peter. I absolutely believe that. And as I've said, it, it, it is... You know, it is the history. I, I want you all sometimes, when, you, when, you, when you're at home alone and you're looking at that TV show that you look at every day, I mean, same time, comes on same time, every day, you're looking at it, you know what's going to happen next, For most, because most of them are reruns. <laughs> just, turn the, just turn the TV off and start rehearsing in your mind all of the ways that God has come through for you over the course of your life. All of the things. For some of you, it might be as, as easy as turning around and look at the, the spouse that you have right now and knowing that God hooked you up with that spouse because he loved you and that, is, that person is a tremendous blessing in your life. Perhaps before you met them, you just never thought you'd find anybody. 
and God saw. I mean, that's a move of God right there. For some of you, it might have been, as I said earlier, it might have been a, a physical or, or something that was going when nobody knew whether you was going to come out or not, but here you are right now. I, I, and list those things. Then the other thing we need to do is we need to rehearse those with our children. We need to teach our children and the people that God puts under our influence how to recognize the hand of God in our lives because God is faithful. And I think sometimes we take his faithfulness for granted. And I don't think we should. I think it's, it behooves us to just continue to rehearse what God has done for us and just how faithful he's been for us. I want to sing a song. I love this song. I've only sang it once, but. <laughs> but what the song talks about is it talks about how faithful God is and how grateful I am that he's, that he's been that faithful. If I never get to see another rainbow Or share another laugh with a friend If I never stand barefoot by the ocean Or get to kiss my child goodnight again if I never have another prayer that's answered Or have another blessing come my way If this is all I know of heaven's kindness Father, I would still have to say You have been good you have been good and i am in wonder how could it be you have been good you've been so good in so many ways you've been good to me you have shown me mercy upon mercy Grace upon grace, time after time. And I know all too well what I'm deserving. Yet you have been both patient and kind. You have been good. You have been good. And I'm in wonder. How could it be? You have been good. You've been so good. In so many ways, you've been good to me. And if suddenly it all were ended and your blessings disappeared, Looking back over a lifetime, the evidence is clear. You have been good, you have been good, and I am in wonder how could it be? You have been good. You've been so good In so many ways You've been good to me You have been good You have been good And I am in wonder How could it be You 
have been good You've been so good So many ways You've been good to me In so many ways You've been good to me today and you know that you don't want to leave this place outside of a refuge of hope you you may be somebody you 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 had a relationship with God but 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 your relationship has suffered for 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 any reason I don't know what the reason is but for some reason you know you're not as close to heaven as you should be I want everybody to please just bow your head right now. And if that's you, if it could be the one of you, if those are you, I want you to say this with me. Say, say, Father, I repent of my sin. I receive you as my Savior. Come into my heart and be Lord of my life. that's you, if that's you, I want you to leave this place with the assurity that God is responding to that prayer to receive you as a child, to, to continue to walk with you. And I don't expect that you feel different right now. Maybe you do. But if you don't, I want you to know that it's not about a feeling. It's about a relationship. It's about you surrendering your will to his. It's about you committing to stand in a space that represents him well every day of your life. It's about knowing that every relationship you have, I don't care if it's the taxi cab, then we don't even have taxi cabs anymore. If it's your Uber driver <laughs> or the person at the end of the checkout line at the grocery store. Every relationship you have is an opportunity to sh for you to share the love of Christ. Every relationship in the way you respond to people. God loves you and he wants his love to shine through you to others. But that's not, don't, don't get that confused with us being a bunch of pushovers and allow the world to have its way with us. That's not what that's about. The kind of Jesus that I serve kicked over tables in the temples when things was out of order. And I stand in his stead today, I'm a table kicker over, however you say that. And I need you all to kick over tables with me. I need you to raise your hand when things are out of way. I need you to speak up in those conversations as they're being had. I need for you to represent Christ well. 